Okay. One more time for folks, Zach and, and Lemetrius. Um, welcome. Uh, we're opening the Parks and Rec Advisory Board meeting uh, today on Wednesday, November 20th. Um, it looks like we have a quorum for today. There's seven of us here, so we should be good to go. Um, public comment period, uh, there's nobody here for that, so we'll dispense with that. Um, the next order of business is just to approve the October 24 minutes. Hopefully everybody got a copy at that time. So did you find no, it? I did. I did. You, you can do that one if you will. Take a time if you hadn't had a chance to review those. Okay, okay. And then there's one that says today's and that's agenda. The one I don't have. Okay. In front of it. Today's agenda. Here, yeah, you can have it. Yep, yep, yep. You can have that one. It's good. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. 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 Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, here we go. E, good. Hey there. Great. Hi. Hey. Good. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Franklin. <laughs> Franklin, we're just reviewing the minutes from uh, last month's meeting and everything, just to see if there's any changes or. Any comments? A motion to approve the minutes from the October meeting. So moved. So moved by Ron, second. I'll second. Second by Ingrid, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good, good. Uh, I, I think we'll kind of go around the order. Um, one of our guest speakers today um, needs to go on first. So, um, I'm sorry, Steven Steven Schmitter. David, okay, yeah, David. Steven. David. Okay. Uh, and speak. Oh, Steven Schmitter, Sheridan Morgan Fitness Center. Yeah, go ahead. Welcome, everybody. Yep. As I said, I'm Steve Schmitter. I'm the supervisor of the Sheridan Morgan Fitness Center down on 10th Street, uh, right across from Williston Middle School. How many people have been there before? Yeah, I have that too. Yeah. Cool. That's good. I'm going to pass around. I'm going to just do like take one, pass it around. Um, we have our regular flyer. Send it two ways. Then we have our fitness class schedule right there. And then a sample flyer of a program that we have going on right now. Yeah, so the Sheridan Morning Fitness Center, for those of y'all that um, maybe haven't been there or even if you have been there but don't know the background, originally started by Mr. Sheridan Morgan, who was a boxer and then boxing coach. Was the boxing center. Yeah, we can get into that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, originally it was in one of the old firehouses, I think on Third Street. He, you know, kind of the idea was to bring in youth and stuff like that to give them a good outlet, you know, something to focus on. He really enjoyed coaching, you know, kids and, and people of all ages, from what I understand. And then they got that center um, where we currently are that's basically the fitness center and fit for fun that are linked together there build that building um, we just celebrated the 25th anniversary of it back in september so we did a little open house event for that which is pretty cool um and so yeah so about 2009 i want to say it was is when things kind of morphed over they kind of had to get rid of the boxing program part of it um, there used to be a ring, all that, but it was also always a community fitness center. Cause I've met people who they had nothing to do with boxing, but they would go work out there even when it was a boxing center. Um, and that was more of the focus. Uh, but over the years, it's really morphed into a, an overall general fitness center, um, where we like to really try to have offerings for people, you know, all kinds of people from the community. Um, uh, really anybody can come work out there at this point. We do still have a little bit of boxing equipment for those that, that like to do that. Um, but we have the cardio equipment, strength equipment, free weights, classes, all those things as well now. Um, and one of the things that we've done, I, I've been working there about six years now. Um, so when I took over one, we again, boxing center. So the brand was a little bit 
uh, I definitely noticed, especially like people that worked at the city and stuff, everyone just went, oh, the boxing center, that's not for me. They didn't realize a lot of people that it was a full out fitness center. So we worked to change the name. So now it is the Sheridan Morgan Fitness Center and not boxing and physical fitness center was the full name before. Um, so that way it, the brand accurately reflects what we are at this point, which is a fitness, a community fitness center that's for everyone. It's the only fitness center that's owned by the city. So we want to make sure that we're really appealing to all demographics and <laughs> that all, all citizens can feel welcome there and feel like there's something there for them. Um, which brings me to my next point, which is since I've been there, what we really kind of try to do is look at, okay, where can we meet people at different points <clears throat> in their, whether it's experience or school <laughs> or whatnot, when it comes to exercise and fitness. So we have everything from your general, just, just you do your membership, right? And you come and work out and you don't worry about us who work there. You know, you don't need help. You just do it on your own. Mm -hmm. But then we also have the classes. Um, so again, you see the class schedule in front of you. You have a variety of classes there. Some are taught by our staff. Some are outsourced um, to a company called Going Fit. We, you know, we contract them and they provide good quality instructors for especially like the specialized classes like a yoga or something like that um then what we also have is what we call our program design and this is a pretty unique offering in that we'll design a program for somebody just as we would our personal training clients um, it's personalized to them they fill out a questionnaire we talk with them kind of figure out exactly what they need slash want um, and then they get one session with us we go over it with them and then they go off on their own and do that program for a little while and they can come back and, you know, purchase a new one, you know, whenever they need one. Um, so that's kind of uh, I need help, but I don't necessarily need a trainer with me the whole time mm -hmm. type of offering there. And then we also do have the personal training uh, where myself and, and my staff do one on one sessions with clients as well. So that's going to be obviously the most amount of, of help that someone wants or needs. Right. Um, so yeah, so again, we tried to try to meet people at all different levels. Um, and then the last branch is the branch that we're kind of working on right now. The most that we're really trying to figure out and revamp, um, is the education component. Uh, that's a place where we really feel passionately that we can maybe provide something that is not provided by, you know, your for-profit businesses and stuff like that which is community education around health and fitness to hopefully be a trusted source, right? Because there is, I don't know how many of you have looked up health and fitness information online, but you know, one minute you can read one thing, the next minute it's the totally contradicting thing, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, what's the truth, right? Um, so we would like to kind of be a resource for people in the community to say, okay, they're not trying to sell me something. They're not, you know, whatever, you know, they, they are credentialed, they have degrees, they have certifications, those type of things. So hopefully they can guide me on the right path when I'm looking for information. So that's, that's something that we're kind of, we've done things before. We used to do monthly workshops, but we had just had trouble getting good attendance with those. So one of the ideas right now is kind of going out to places where there's already people. Mm -hmm. um, so whether that's outside community partners or we're just working with some of the other um, community centers in within the Wilmington Parks and Rec, like the MLK Center, Davis Center, Halle Burton, trying to go to some of their events or different programs that they already hold that have, you know, a good amount of people and just, just partnering with them so that we can get in front of people um, and really, you know, you know, help out with, like I said, that, that educational aspect that, again, we, we're just looking to be a trusted source for people. That's, that's kind of our goal there. Because I know it can be a very confusing landscape, especially if you go online or, you know, just whatever your neighbors say, hey, I read this or I heard this, you know, whatever. So we want to kind of help out with that. But that, that's the one place where we're kind of trying to trying to revamp things and figure out what, what may be the best way for us to do that. Um, because resources, as I'm sure you all know, within Parks and Rec are, can be scarce, right? We only have so much budget. We only have so much staff. We only have so much time. Uh, the personal training, we have a well, fairly large wait list for that at this point. So that does take up a good amount of our time. Uh, there is just myself. We have a coordinator, a full-time coordinator and a full-time uh, specialist. So it's just three employees to, to handle all that. So we are busy, but we get it done. 
Uh, any questions? So you're the only trainer? How many trainers did you say? All three of us train. Oh, all three of you train. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, good. Um, how many members do you have? Uh, yes, I was meant to mention that, and I forgot about around 500 right now. Oh, wow. That's the lot. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's during nice. during COVID, it had dropped to this, like 350-ish, mm -hmm. and when we did business plans at the time, one of my goals was to get it to like 550, so we're... What do you think there. your capacity is, 550? <sighs> Maybe, yeah. Well, I don't know. It, so, I mean, it's like anything, right? We have 500 members, but how many people are actually right. coming at any given time, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends on how many people are actually going to be utilizing it, really. Which, again, we're not Planet Fitness, just looking for as many people to sign up and get right. profit as we can. Right. Right. So we would love for everyone to utilize it. If all 500 people were showing up all the time, that probably would already max it. <laughs> you know, we can only handle so many. And, and most of them city residents? I see you have a rate for non-city. Is there Right. It's mostly city residents. Uh -huh. I mean, usually if it's outside, it's like, Leland, you know, like right across the bridge or mm -hmm. something like that. Maybe mm -hmm. they work close by, mm -hmm. but they don't they don't live close right. by. Right. Or it's just outside city limits, Nogden or some, mm -hmm. somewhere like that. Um, but yeah, definitely mostly city residents. We also have employees. We do an employee discount. Do you have a meaningful number of young people, young adults? And so that it depends on what age you're looking at. So we do go 12, I believe it says on the sheet there, we do go 12 and up. I would say in the teenage range, very few for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in your 20s to 30s, it's not, it's not too bad. It's, I think it's, it's grown since I've been there, I, I want to say for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, all age ranges. Of demographics. I mean, again, we don't ask people this, but just, you know, kind of knowing people and especially talking to people and things like that. Definitely a wide range of um, socioeconomic backgrounds and things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's really most of the people there, if you would just, you know, again, we don't keep all the data, but if you would ask people there, is there a diverse population of people that come here? They would say, yeah, for sure. A lot of people like that because it, it's a community center, right? So it, it's a great place where you can kind of be around people that are at least have one, you know, they have one thing in common. Everybody's trying to get somewhat fitter or healthier there, right? So we like that aspect of it for sure. As far as community outreach education, um, any thoughts towards nutrition and trying to educate people if they can come there for that? And, you know, it's such a big yeah. thing these days. Yeah. So we, we try to, to steer away from nutrition or from the sense that none of us are registered nutritionists or RDs or anything like that. So, you know, we can give mm -hmm. what I would do like in private business, mm -hmm. you can, I would toe the line a lot more. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but working for the city, I've just kind of been like, eh, we're not going to get close right. to the line. Right. Yeah. Um, but we have partnered before with, you know, there is community partners and stuff like that, that mm -hmm. have offered, you know, free, like the workshops that we used to run. They, they've, they've brought out free, you know, workshops and different things like that. So it's definitely somewhere that we know that yes, people probably want that information mm -hmm. and we can help to, you know, hopefully put someone in front of them that again, can be a trusted source and something like that. Yeah. What, what, what would make your program better besides money? <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> gone, gone. We're good right anyway. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, if you would have asked me a couple of years ago, I would have definitely just said awareness because so many, I mean, myself included, I've lived here most of my life and didn't know the place existed until I, I saw the job online. Mm -hmm. it was about, it's the city has a fitness center. I didn't know that. Um, so the rebranding has really helped though. I, I do believe that. Um, like I said, we've grown. Um, Google search is pretty good. It seems like we get a lot of people who just moved to the area and like, yep, look, looked up what gyms are near me and y'all came up. So I came to check it out. Um, so that stuff is good. Uh, probably one of the biggest things that we'll run into, I think sooner than later, y'all were asking about like capacity before is our classroom is really small. Um, again, that may be, that's a money thing. So, but you know, it is a constraint for sure. We have a very small classroom. We have reached capacity in there before yoga actually at times has had to go over to the fit for fun center and because they're not open at 6 30 a.m. Mm -hmm. when we have yoga and use their space. So um, how big is it the room you get? Is it as big as this or bigger than just a little bit bigger than this? It, we can pretty much 
just barely fit 12 people mm-hmm. in a class. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, 12 with the instructor would be, mm-hmm. you can only do so much. Yeah. Yeah. So you're collecting $55 per city resident. I have a couple of questions about that. How sure. did you decide it was $55 and what happens to the money? Yeah. So it goes to the general pot, right? First of all, we do have a, um, gosh, forget what they call it, but $1 of every, so mm-hmm. we go, goes to a committed revenue mm-hmm. account that we can then use at, at our facility, which was very helpful actually, <laughs> because when I first started, I was told about it. Um, and they're like, ah, yeah, you, could, you probably got a few hundred bucks in there or whatever. I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, we'll save it for a rainy day, you know, and I never looked at it, never touched it. And then last year we needed to buy our four-way cable machine, which is our most expensive piece Mm -hmm. yeah definitely our most expensive piece and that would have been easily our whole budget for the year in terms of new equipment um but we had it was was like six grand or something in that (laughs) revenue i was like oh that's more than i thought (laughs) so we were able to use that plus a few other funds and and purchase that um so that was and and so so you're saying that that this money the twenty five thousand dollars it goes in just to a general fund it's not a line item budget within parks and rec and that money just stays within parks and rec that's not my understanding no yeah it goes to the general fund yeah but they have this committed revenue so but it's not all of the revenue it's only a portion of the revenue membership goes that's not unusual for some of our one-off facilities like that yeah Yeah. Um, wow yeah. Well, wow. I think even for the amphitheater, not the amphitheater, the new park. Riverfront. Riverfront, that you only get $2. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we, we, it's a little more than $6,000 we get out of Riverfront, though, <laughs> thankfully. But yeah, we, we typically get committed revenue back from those items that require fees from the uh, park. Uh, it's sad. It is sad. Yeah. Um, and the $55. I mean, yeah. That's really, I didn't, I didn't really, want to skip really that. So I just inherited uh, what was 52 that I, that I inherited. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, well, we should raise it every so often. So we went up to 55 and the plan is to, you know, a couple bucks here and there. Yeah. But so full transparency, I, since I started, was trying to get the answer to, okay, I know that we're a government entity, but there's kind of three options for a place that takes in revenue, right? It's either we lose money and they don't care because it's, you know, we're subsidizing a good service, mm-hmm. right, to the community. We break even, right, cost recovery, or we're for-profit, like parking or something like that, right? It's like I assume parking is a for-profit thing. Um, never really got a good answer to that until recently. I guess they've done, they've done a, a study. <laughs> you know? um, so... There's apparently ongoing meetings about that and exactly how that's going to work. I think what they're going to ask is some places to kind of increase the amount of revenue that they bring in. But I also have been assured because, again, as I spoke, we are a community center and we do want people to be able to come there that couldn't go to even Planet Fitness or, you know, somewhere cheap like that. Um, So, you know, there's options there, too. Like you can do... um, fee assistance and stuff like that if we were to ever get more expensive. Um, but that's also part of even why we did the six-month option was because occasionally someone would be like, man, I can't come up with 55 yeah. right now. And I'm like, I was like, all right, let's come up with a six, you know, something that'll be a cheaper one time for them. We'll pay 30 bucks for six months. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's really it's up to people higher than me to decide whether, what, whether we're supposed to make money or break even or anything like that. Obviously, with those current prices, we're not making. <laughs> but the personal training was it was not an existent program before I started, and we did add that. And that does you know bring in some revenue that we weren't getting before. So. And that's somewhere where I would feel comfortable. I mean, as you can see, that is extremely cheap. <laughs> we could raise that price, and to me, it still wouldn't totally price people out. You know, some people maybe, but it would still be a lot cheaper than any personal training anywhere else. Um, and I also don't, I, I go back and forth on that one as whether I view that as a service that we have, to, that we should really feel necessary to offer to everyone, or if it is kind of a more luxury type service anyways, you know, but I, I like it being affordable because I, I know we have clients that couldn't afford personal training elsewhere. And it is nice to be able to serve those people. That is a great price. Yeah. Great price. Yeah. 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 
have you approached the idea of giving up more less than one? I mean, getting more out of it more than one dollar um, transaction. I mean, it, yeah, that seemed to me is pocket change <laughs> sure. going to the city you know, sure. or pocket change going to you and right. going to the city is still if you took another dollar out. Right, right. Just, yeah, no, that's a good point. I honestly have not, you know, it's just one of those things that that's how it was established previously. I know that I know that there is at budget time, it's one of those things that you can kind of ask for as a new committed revenue line or or, or in this case, I guess it would be an increase. Try it. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would be, but yeah, it can always <laughs> ask. Come, to, come, come to us and we can always <laughs> have recommended it. Yeah. If it's appropriate. What is your annual budget? Um, yeah, but I'm always looking at each line individually, of so I'm thinking of the whole thing. Uh, it's probably those are as to probably like 35,000. That's not counting like that. What I'm in charge of, of course, yeah, because yeah. I'm not in charge of the staff salaries, I'm not in charge of getting the electric bill, things like that. But the stuff that I'm in charge of is probably like 35,000. Okay. How many staff? Three. Three. <laughs> About three full time. You need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Check it, check it out. It is a really nice facility. Yeah. yeah first day is always free. <laughs> <laughs> extra Get on that waiting list. Check it out. First of all, check it out. <laughs> 6 a.m. Yeah, okay, we'll expect right us there. to be there. <laughs> I'm already somewhere <laughs> else at 6 <laughs> at the Y. It's uh, yeah. one. I forgot about these on this. One more thing I want to pass around. We um, only had three left, so if y'all just you know want to take a look at them, this is something that we put together. An example of like a partnership thing and also something we thought of for education purposes. So Fit for Fun, I don't know if y'all have heard from Victoria over there yet, kind of know what they do. But one of the things that they've done that has been pretty successful is these park pop-ups. Mm -hmm. They'll go to a park and, hey, if your phone's going to be here, they make a call on social media, right? Get a bunch of families come out and bring the kids and it's good for the parks too, right? We partnered with them when they were over at the Davis center and we, um, because a, they have new outdoor fitness equipment at the playground at the Davis center. Um, so we kind of wanted to show maybe some parents or, or adults how to use that, but we also made a little pamphlet on like fitness for busy parents. Um, so again, this is just a way that we thought about kind of trying to be creative, um, in our, in our, uh, education outreach. So, we put together that little pamphlet to Great give out. Idea. Yeah, to give out there and kind of talk to them there. I don't want to take up too much yep. of y'all's mm -hmm. time. Steve, we appreciate Thanks. it. It was yeah. really informative. Thanks a lot. Thank okay. you. No problem. You Thank you all for having me. Okay. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Real quick, just j jumping back to old business, just to remind everybody in January and February, we're going to be working on our, our work plan, you know, kind of our SWOT analysis and where we stand. Uh, so we hope to get that accomplished in, in January and February. So just be prepared for that. Um, our next guest, Ron. Yeah. Introducing. Travis Henley with planning. Yes. Okay. You can pull up a presentation and share the screen. Okay. Um, if I can just drive, I should yeah. be able to get to it. Y'all would, would think the planner in the room would be, you know, planned for this. But <laughs> don't hold that against me, please. Um, let's see. Oops. Oh, this is your R drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Test me on the fly here. HDM, HDMI. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to remove the, the meeting. Um, I'm, I'm hooked in. We can just change the uh, source. Well, I won't. I, well, I'll be able to share the screen to the folks virtually. Mm -hmm. This is probably not. I think I can fix this real quick. They're conversing. Just want two seconds under old pills. Okay, okay, was, okay. There's gonna be more than that if Amy was here, but she passed. So okay, just real quick. Okay, in and out. Okay, okay. Right. Yes. Just to update on. That's good, 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 good. Okay, good. I don't good. know what they're doing. In that okay, okay, good. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll jump back for sure. Yep. That's good now. Yes, this is right. That's just yeah, a, yeah, yeah. what we did. 
Yeah, that's true. Huh? Thank you. All right. I think I did pretty good on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> over there amazed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for, for bearing with me. My name is Travis Henley, uh, the Comprehensive Planning Manager for the City of Wilmington. What that means is uh, essentially I'm in charge of the big picture side of the planning department. I've been with the city since September of last year. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what it means. <laughs> so... Um, if any of you have thoughts on that, let me know. <laughs> um, we've been working, I say we, officially since November of 2022, uh, or 2023, excuse me, on the greater downtown plan. And when I say that to people, usually their first question is, what is greater downtown? So greater downtown, and I'm going to try to minimize this just a little bit. Um, Greater downtown is made up of 18 neighborhoods. This boundary that you see on the screen, Smith Creek in the north, Greenfield Lake in the south, a murkier boundary of Burnt Mill Creek, the railroad, a branch of Burnt Mill Creek and 17th Street on the east, and of course the river in the west, um, is identical to the city limits as they existed in 1945. Um, one, that tells you how much the city has ex expanded post-World War II. And two, this area is already treated differently by our land development code. It's really the only spot in the city where a true urban grid exists. Um, and with that comes different development expectations, different wants, different needs from folks. So we treated this area differently for a long time. And so it makes a lot of sense to treat it, um, you know, give it its own plan that goes beyond what the comprehensive plan did a few years ago. Um, this is just sort of an overview of, of all of the different players involved. We have a steering committee. It is made up of 23 people, which I have learned is way too many. <laughs> um, but it's it's made up of six residents, um, a, a representatives from a number of kind of your key downtown player organizations, Wilmington Housing Authority, um, Historic Wilmington Foundation, uh, Cape Fear Community College, so on and so forth. And it, it's worked out well that a lot of the representatives they chose also were residents of Greater Downtown. I am also a resident of Greater Downtown. Um, the city team is made up of myself as well as uh, Hillary Taylor and Haley Hopkins, who are on my team, mm -hmm. as well as our consultant team, which is quite large. Um, we have a, a primary consultant, uh, an organization called Agency Landscape and Planning. They're based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, and five sub-consultants. Um, they're all in, in charge of different things. And then finally, we, we have an implementation committee, which is city leadership. You know, Amy and Sally sit on it. Uh, Rachel Schuler, uh, Sad McKinney, uh, from the manager's office, a bunch of other folks as well. And... Then you have the Wilmington community running all through all of it. Um, public engagement is a key part of anything the planning department does, despite what you know some social media comments might say. Um, <laughs> but it really has been the heart of this planning effort. And I'll talk more about the engagement as we move through the presentation. Um, this is just some of the previous planning efforts that have influenced what we're working on. The greater downtown area had three different plans that sort of governed it. Vision 2020, which was the downtown core, and it's probably the one you've heard of. Mm -hmm. um, there was a north side plan from 2003 and a south side plan from 2009. All three of them, what we would call small area plans in the field, all three of them over greater downtown talking about very similar development patterns, but all three not exactly matching up with each other in terms of what their study areas were. Um, the three of them missed really what you would consider kind of the historic residential core south of Market Street. 
Um, it also didn't touch on any of the streetcar suburbs at all, you know, Carolina Place, Carolina Heights, anything like that. Um, our comprehensive plan, Create Wilmington, of course, did touch on all of it, like it did the entire city. Um, those are those maps up on the wall, by the way. That's where those were from. Um, of course, our land development code update, which took effect December 1st, 2021, the Parks and Rec Master Plan, all kinds of other plans. I don't, that's not the point of why I'm here, but um, as part of the public engagement, really these four themes have come out as the vision of what we're talking about. Local character, small business, mobility, economic health, or we ended up shortening that just to economy. Phase one of our engagement strategy involved uh, a, a number of pop-up events. It actually ended up being 17 uh, pop-up events, 11 focus group discussions, two open houses, a steering committee meeting, an implementation committee meeting, a number of one-on-one -on -one interviews, and it was a lot. Um, that was between roughly the beginning of April, started with Azalea Festival, and went through the middle of July. Um, in-person engagement, we had approximately 1,350 people, um, and that consisted of one of our survey questions as well as a mapping exercise where we had a essentially a, a styrofoam board with a map of greater downtown, and we asked folks to put little flags into it saying what areas they loved and what areas needed improvement. We learned very early on that first day at Azalea Festival that the boards were a lot sturdier than we thought, and so we actually had to use pencils to drill pilot holes to get the flags to stick. We broke so many flags that first day, it was, it was crazy. But, um, and then we also had a survey, um, which reached approximately 1,450 people. So total phase one was right about 2,800 uh, people. And I'm gonna give you kind of a snapshot of what we heard. I want greater downtown to be X. This was the question that existed in the survey as well as on our table out at the pop-up. So these numbers, the numbers that went into this question are a lot greater than the rest of the survey questions that I'll share with you in a second. We had six big mason jars look like this. And we had pom-pom, little fuzzballs. And we said, okay, we have six jars on the table. Pick your best three. Um, or if you want to put all three of yours into one pot, you can. Um, a safe and pleasant place for walking and biking and authentic, driven by locals and uniquely ours came to the top. Right behind it, a beautiful place known for its lush green space. Um, those were our top three. I think it's, it's very difficult to say that your downtown shouldn't be all six of those things. Um, it was very interesting that, you know, a, a destination for tourism and recreation and a job center for commerce and industry ended up so low. Um, most people saw that tourism word and just skipped over it entirely. Um, so that's, you know, Wording is important when you're crafting these public engagement opportunities, and I'll say more on that here in a little bit. Um, I'd be more likely to visit greater or downtown if there were better public spaces, including parks, street trees, benches, and active storefronts. Right behind it, easier parking. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I would walk or bike more in greater downtown if there were safer bike lanes and sidewalks. That one was clearly a runaway. Um, as the population increases, we can add housing downtown by restoring historic homes and buildings to rent out and creating apartments over shops and restaurants. Um, in this question, they were allowed to pick any of the ones that they, that, uh, they wanted. Clearly, mid and high rise apartments was relatively less popular. I think that probably makes sense, but it's nice to have that data that supports that. And finally, uh, again, this was another one where you could pick all of uh, any option that you liked. Foster a sense of inclusion and belonging downtown. I think it's important that the number one answer being public spaces and businesses are friendly and accessible to everyone including children, parents, elderly persons, and people with disabilities. We've heard a lot over the course of this entire project that downtown, greater downtown, and the downtown core is 
for a specific group of people. And those are people that are over 21. Um, the, I, I can't put a number on the amount of times that would say I, we would come downtown, we being a, a young family, if there was more things for my you know 10 year old to engage with. It's a children's museum and that's awesome. I think you know the co-locating project, um, the museum and the library together through Project Grace is gonna be helpful with that, but clearly there's there's more we could be doing here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so those four thematic areas again became 14 strategies. Um, and this becomes the uh, sort of essence of phase two of our engagement. So I'm gonna run through the strategies. Yeah, I should. Also, I should say this this PowerPoint is kind of a Frankenstein's monster. Um, I'm lifting, lifted from a couple different uh, presentations that we've done, so splash of color. Um, local character, uh, we've got four strategies here. Create safe and pleasant public spaces, build in harmony with historic scale and character, create neighborhoods where residents can meet their daily needs, and create more green spaces and plant more trees. Um, I think all four of these are pretty straightforward, and I'll tell the story of, on how this is going from the public side here in a minute. On economy, use publicly owned properties to advance community goals. As I, I think everyone is aware, the, the city and also the county too, owns quite a bit of property in the downtown area that isn't currently being used for anything. Um, if you've driven by 305 Chestnut right now, my former office, you see it's in the process of being torn down. Um, I don't know how to feel about that yet. I'm still processing it. But, uh, you know, what do we do with those properties? Um, those, are, those are some of the things we're trying to figure out. Improving access to high quality, affordable housing. That was never not going to be part of, of this planning effort, but there it is. And then increase the number of people who both live and work in greater downtown. Um, based on the, on the, the data and, and research that our consultants did, we found that greater, greater downtown holds approximately 15,000 jobs. Greater downtown is the, the residence of about 6,500 people. And if you do that Venn diagram, those who both live and work in greater downtown is a much smaller number than you would expect it to be. Mm -hmm. So when you have effectively 14,000 people commuting into downtown every day, and you've got about 5,000 people commuting out of downtown every day, well, that does nothing to make our traffic problem any better, does it? So it's been interesting, though, when, again, back to wording, as people are looking at this, at this group, one, they see high quality affordable housing. Of course, that one's going to be popular. Two, they see increase the number of people who live and just go away from it. Um, this really isn't just about you know increasing the number of people that live downtown. It's about bringing that that the intersection point of that Venn diagram and making that bigger. Uh, on the small business side, improving the physical environment within retail areas to attract customers. The example I always use for that one is Castle Street. Um, you know, can we make the sidewalks wider? Can we better define the parking spaces? Can we plant more street trees, put more benches? Can we do something to just, in, if, you know, improving your experience walking between businesses? Um, you know, you theoretically would increase the, number, the amount of activity inside those businesses too. Attracting and help establishing new businesses and improving support for existing businesses are also located within this goal. And then finally, on the mobility front, make streets safe and accessible for all users. That is really the one that's sort of most focused on vehicular travel. Um, improving the bicycle and pedestrian network along city streets. Continuing work on the downtown trail network and make it easier to park once and get around in greater downtown. Um, that one meaning, you know, what, what we heard a lot from folks in, in phase one was, it'd be really nice if I could park, say over by Flytrap Brewery. Mm -hmm. And then if we say, you know what, we wanna go over to Highwire 
um, or we want to go down to the cargo district or something. Is is there ways in which we could make it easier to get over there without moving the car? Um, hopefully that's safer. You know, obviously we don't want people drinking and driving or anything like that. But um, so before I move on any further, these strategies have been what we have based our phase two of engagement on. Everything that I've shown here will be in the plan. What we're asking for help with now is how to prioritize them. what's most important. Where do we start? Knowing, as, as Stephen said, resources are tight. Um, so, <coughs> we started phase two on September 12th, and we have gone to, as of today, Today, the, the WDI hospitality luncheon, I think that puts us at 19. Um, this does not include another steering committee meeting and two more implementation committee meetings as well. Um, what we have, the, the public engagement through this plan has been aggressive, um, to say the least. And it's been myself and Haley and Hillary um, a division that is down two positions right now um, doing the bulk of, of this work. And we will have earned the Thanksgiving break for sure. Um, but it has been absolutely wonderful to be out in the community and talking to, to people and the amount of people who remember us from phase one. Mm -hmm. It gets more and more and more every event we do. Wow. And to me, this is the model going forward now for anything that we do. Is it aggressive? Yes. Is it time consuming? Yes. Are my people getting a lot of extra time off? Yes. Uh, but it's worth it, I think. Um, we have a survey um, that is a exact one-for-one -one replica of our uh, pop-up strategy that's out on the website right now. Um, it actually also went out in the city newsletter, which just went out yesterday, I think. And who knows? We, we had kind of identified Thanksgiving as the cutoff point for phase two, but some of these events that are have been on the calendar for months, some of them happen day of. Um, we've tried to be nimble where we can. Um, thankfully, I, I have a, a director who supports that. Um, and has been willing to help us as has the rest of the planning department as well as the folks up in the strategy um, department as well. So as a sneak preview, this is where we are so far. Um, on local character, creating more green space, and planting more trees, creating neighborhoods where residents can meet their daily needs and creating safe and pleasant public spaces are all pretty much neck and neck. Um, Interestingly, building in harmony with historic scale and character is a distant last place. Um, we're not going to get rid of our historic districts. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. We're never going to do that. But I think it's interesting when, when folks are asked to make a choice of what's really important, they're not saying that as much as they are the other three. Affordable housing was always going to be the, the runaway winner in the economy. I don't think any of us are, are shocked by that. Um, again, that increasing the number of, of people who live and work in greater downtown has been less, um, less popular. However, what I would say about that group is if we use the publicly owned properties to advance community goals and we use them to build affordable housing, the number of people who live, both live and work in greater downtown will increase. So um, I think feel like we're on the money right there for small business. Uh, supporting the existing businesses has been the most popular. Um, and then on mobility, again, we've kind of got a three-way tie here um, between parking, safe and accessible streets, and improving the bike ped network. Um, Continuing work on the downtown trail has been less popular, and I think it's because of that word continue. Um, that's the only one that says continue up there. Um, so, you know, subconsciously, if people think it's already happening, well, I don't need to waste my resources on that. I don't know. Um, this is based on 873 uh, 
people that we've reached so far in person. The survey responses are not included in here. And I will also say that the 107 people who voted today at WDI's event is not included in here either. I tried to get the data. I just ran out of time. So are these 873 respondents all from central downtown areas or are they all over the city? I meant to say that earlier. Thank you. Um, every respondent has been located inside greater downtown when they took this. Um, we have been in, intentional about trying to reach residents where we can, but also not excluding anyone, whether that's, you know, not just talking about other residents of the city of Wilmington, but New Hanover County, Brunswick County, Pender County, and anything. Your this our, our downtown is entire all of southeastern North Carolina's downtown. Um, it is the center point for the entire region, and your downtown is for everybody. Um, and so, because of that, we haven't we haven't tried to exclude anybody. We haven't asked the question um, when it comes to in person. Um, now, most people, it, it, you know when they have specific localized issues, that's where you learn who lives in greater downtown. I will say phase two has definitely had more residents um, of greater downtown than phase one did. I, I know that for just via the conversations that we've had. Um, so what's next? Um, and this is a very short list. What's, what's actually next is way longer than this. Um, we're developing actions that fall under each of those strategies. So if we say, all right, we want to increase the amount of affordable housing, greater downtown. All right, how are we going to do that? Um, it's not a matter of just, okay, we're going to let developers do whatever they want. That's not good enough. Um, at least I hope it isn't. Um, the development of an implementation strategy, that's where the, the activity um, comes in and the prioritization vote. So once we have the action list, determining how that all fits together and how the planning department leads the effort across the entire city government structure and beyond into the community of how to make this vision a reality. And then once we get into 2025, the presentation of the full document to the community, um, that's phase three of our engagement strategy and then bringing it forward for the steering committee, then the planning commission, then city council to consider for adoption, hopefully by May of next year. Um, Travis? Yes. Can, can I ask you to wrap it up? Because I know there's a lot of questions. I have questions and, and we're running on time. So if you can just kind of get to a, a closing point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're landed that way. Um, the curiosity, the, the yeah. demographics of the residents, I thought it was more of like a retired community. I didn't realize there was any more working families that lived down there. It's it's rapidly, rapidly changing. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. The, the number of folks do. I think, you know, we started with the Zellia Festival, which was a, a big swing of the bat. And we talked to almost 700 people just during the two days of Celia Festival. Mm -hmm. And the amount of people that came up to us that are, you know, younger people, you know, mid to late 20s up through, you know, late 30s who came up to us and said, yeah, we just moved over to 8th Street or we just moved over to McRae or, um, you know, or down by Greenfield Lake or mm -hmm. whatever. Looking at, at Paul. Um, Oh, you know, he's <laughs> like yeah. the, the amount of folks that, that are included in that group is just very clearly risen a lot. And a lot of them said, yeah, we moved here after COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, you lived out there? Now, the flip side of that, and a word I haven't said yet, but I'll say it now, is gentrification. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That is a very difficult thing to try to address when, you know, you're, you're, like, for example, the planning department's statutory authority is very skewed towards the protected, I would say skewed in a negative way. I don't mean it negative, but it's skewed towards protection of private property rights. Um, there's only going to be so much we can do to stop gentrification. I think it's more about finding ways to accommodate folks who want to live downtown without pushing the people who live downtown out. Um, you know, increasing the awareness of all of the great housing programs that our housing department runs. Um, increasing the resources that go into those programs because they're out of money already. Um, doing other things that, you know, 
softly increased density, gentle density. Um, you know, letting someone turn their house into a duplex or a triplex. And, and you mentioned something about, you know, one of the things that people want to know if, if like younger families, if they had things going on downtown that would draw them down there. Ingrid, Alexa, did, did, weren't we asked when the Riverfront Park opened to come up with ideas and didn't we submit a look? Ron, does that, does that ring a bell? Seems like we sat and we all gave some ideas about things that could go on at the Riverfront Park, you know? And I'm saying that for Sally when she hears all that, you know, because it seems like we did, but, you know, and, you know, uh, and that, that was a while back. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. I'm, I'm more than happy to take any questions, but I also brought the activity with me. And so if, if, you'd like, I can put it in the center of the table and it can take three or four minutes for everybody to vote if you'd uh, like to do that. I don't know if we'll have the time. One last thing, Dram Park going down the river to Waterman's Brewery. Any idea development there since they tore down that building? You know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. Um, that, that has certainly come up as a sort of prime, you know, opportunity spot to do some increased green space, especially if if the bridge is moving south, that opens up your potential even more right around the boat ramp. Mm. Um, there's also potential down there. You know, we've heard parking is an issue, so potentially south of the new bridge. If there's a way to form some sort of park and ride, that's an idea that one of our consultants had. Um, you know, finding a way to get, you know, if you know the downtown trolley route, I think, has changed four times just since we've been working on this plan. So um well let's do you know, things like let's that let's wrap up kind of some things here and if people want to stick around you know and, and kind of take a look and, and talk that then they can do it there just so we can get out of here uh i'm going to go back to old business um ron and give you two minutes you want to yeah, talk about that minutes. yeah I passed out <laughs> it's been exactly one year mm -hmm. i have since those of us who were on the board at that time passed this resolution that's on the top of the two-page packet regarding uh, this vacant piece of property at uh, the north end of MP Park uh, used to be a, a uh, now it's an abandoned uh, softball court. The pickleball community was made aware of that and uh, came to us. I'm involved in both sides of this thing. And anyway, we came up, this committee came up with this resolution. Um, with Amy's baby's directive, we modified it a little bit to ask for the city to do a feasibility study as to whether or not it could handle such a project. It's my understanding that that has been done um, and it came back in a, I guess I'd call it a positive sense. And quite frankly, I was going to ask Amy tonight, but she's not here. What next? You know, this, I mean, this group said, do this just to hopefully do move on. And I understand there's no funding, which that's always it, which is fine, but just get an update on what is the status of that effort that was begun a year ago. Um, and like I said, this is for those who weren't here and those who, uh, we did do. Uh, and the other one, the, the second page is a uh, petition that was done by the Pickleball Club. I gathered 754 signatures on that, asking that that particular piece of property be utilized for pickleball. So anyway, that's it. Good, good, good. Uh, well, well, let me say, yeah. my intent now is I'm just going to go directly to Amy. I mean, I'm just going to see if I can't set up a conference with Amy to just talk yeah. with her about it. I think the last I heard from Sally was that, that the, the study's being finalized right now, and there's going to be a presentation hopefully in January. Oh, it's I, and, 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 that, and that's fine. I've heard almost the that's same right. thing for three months. <laughs> you know, it's whenever. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what the presentation is. To, I mean, to us. I think or, to here. Oh, oh, it is. It will come to here. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. Okay. Oh, okay. Good, good. That's so you just kind of hold back then, you know, if they're coming I'll to still us. Yeah. Talk to Amy. <laughs> See if that's what she's doing. I don't know. Seeking a grant or LWCF grant? I have no idea. We, we, the pickleball community, really only wants the city to say, yes, it can be pickleball. Right. And the pickleball community right. can raise money. They've right. got some money. Right. Um, but they're not going to spend it until they know. And as my line is just don't a ninja kids park there. Right. You know, yeah. if you want us to help, we're willing to do it. But you got to say it's going to be pickleball. It, whatever. It may be forever. I mean, the funding, who knows what that'll do. But, yeah. but you're right. I was talking to somebody today about grants that are out there around. Or you mm -hmm. could even get a matching grant. Be humble. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah.
Okay, um, Chair's report, I, I think it's a non-issue, but it just really brought up my curiosity, this whole thing about this Brian's Farm, that's the 60 acres, you know, that's at the end of Independence uh, by Carolina Beach Road, but it's county owned, and even if they turn it into green space, we don't think, or Ron doesn't really think that unless they partner, that it's anything that would come under his bailiwick as far as having to manage, so, but it's really an interesting uh, situation that's going on, so. Um, so my only other business and it's the most important business is our annual um, Christmas get together. Um, I've got two dates, uh, the 11th or the 18th of December. Uh, it'll be at the same venue at the uh, city club in, in the grill room. So please email me uh, and let me know which date works best. The 18th, if we were meeting in December, would happen to be the third Wednesday of the month. So um, please check your calendars, get to me so we can book it. Um, I, I, 11th and the 18th. That's the usual meeting day. The 18th would have been right, the usual meeting day. That's when we usually meet, you know, so... Um, so please do that and get back to me via email. Joe, I guess you've got my email. Well, you know what yes. it is? It's on the back. Oh, yeah, it's in that sheet list. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank All you. right. For both dates or entire month. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Okay. So, yeah, just, just let me know. We look, we look forward to that uh, uh, again. Um, staff report judges. Um, Anybody who wants to judge, Ron, I don't know if you have anything more. I guess this is kind of Sally's notes for the holiday parade. I know Zach enjoyed it. Did you do a question? No. Okay. I don't know. Thank you. Can't do it this year. The yeah. question is to look for three or four folks that can help judge. Cheryl Smith. She no. wants to sign up? No, he really yeah, I think I'll be in the city club. And then so she's like, oh. <laughs> hey, I'm still in this meeting. I'll call you right back. Your dates are wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, excuse um, me. This uh, this Lemetrius. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Hey. 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 How are you doing? Great. How are you? Awesome. I want to see what are the dates for the judge um, judging. Uh, be December eighth. December eighth. In the afternoon or evening, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's a Sunday, Lemetrius, December eighth, and and you'd have to be down there by five thirty, um, on the intersection of Market and Front Street, where I'm sure Sally would be there to to meet you. Yeah, every day she was there last year. Yeah, yeah, to be there and meet you. So, okay, December eighth. You said at what time? Five thirty on a Sunday. Five thirty in the afternoon. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I just checked my calendar. Yeah, I'm not available that day. If I was, I, I definitely would do it. So hopefully the next it's time. Fine. It is actually fine. You've done, I've done, done it yeah, quite you've a done. few times. So I was going to step down this year if somebody else wants to do it. But if you're still looking for people, I'll do it. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's about it. Uh, kind of board open discussion. Anything any board member would like to bring up? Joe, it's great to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, good. There being no further business, um, if we can have a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved by Ron. A second. Second. Second, second by Ingrid. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Thank you. Hey, listen, great right Thanksgiving. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, happy December. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. You too. Okay. December. Yeah, we don't meet. January. Yes. That's uh, seven. Uh, January 15th. That'll be the third one. Yeah. Where is the word? It was because it was that.